Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Garage Shop Build Day 4, Episode 4, whatever I decide to call them. In today's episode, you guys see this old floor? Look at it. It's just, there's a razor blade. Why? In today's video, we've got some stuff to get this garage one step closer to being fine a lot. Yes, again, I shelled out the dumb amount of money for rock solid Rust-Oleum uh, floor. Goodbye, Royce Bloyd. I did not buy the super expensive rock solid stuff because if you guys don't know and can't tell, the shop is massive and I would be poor if I decided to do the same stuff that we did at my home garage. So, Save 10% on the discount code below. We don't have a discount code. I really wish I did. Rustoleum, by the way, I've made so many videos. Why have I not been contacted? This is supposed to fill 450 to 500 square feet. So let's do math. 500 plus 500 plus 500 should equal 1500, right? I'm calling it right now. Those three, they're gonna barely be able to do this part of the garage. You guys see this line, this little, we call it the bay line. I predict that this area will barely be able to be done by those three. I would love to be wrong and not have to buy four more of those. We will see at the end of this video. We are also going to be leveling out these little, you guys see these little holes and shit? Luke does some really cool shots with the camera on wheels. So we're gonna try to make the ground as level as possible so that way when he rolls around to get all the shots, it can be as nice as possible. So I think that's all we're gonna do today. Oh, we got lights to put up too. Like we did those, but quicker. We got a lot to do today. Uh, hopefully the floor is partially done by the end of it. Let's get started. You guys, you guys done f***ing around now? Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, oh, you were just cleaning. All I, I'm sitting there trying to be a goddamn professional. All I see is this. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot to do today. We're gonna get to it and hopefully not F around anymore. Uh, let's get the lights up first, boys. Actually, my hand hurts now. I should have. Why are you so close to me? the greatest news with the lights we've got that recycled one that recycled one and we got the for some reason I've reason for some reason I've got two types of LEDs the T8s one are from Amazon and one of them are those don't get those get the Amazon you guys can see how much brighter it is over there like looking in the camera but now we can move on to prepping the floor and prepping the walls the lighting took way longer than expected. Clean the floor. Vacuuming done. So, Brian, what is the chemical that we bought and why did we buy it? Concentrated degreaser, uh -huh. so we can thin it out as much as we need to get the floor to the point that we need it. Now, this stuff is like concentrated, which means what? I believe the mix that they said on here is uh, 20 ounces of the cleaning solution to a gallon of water. So we just mix it with water and then pour it on the ground and then what? what? We'll just use a mop bucket, mop the whole floor and then empty the bucket and mop it with clean water once or twice and then let it dry. Okay, so, and then while it dries, we could patch walls stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, Trash Panda, you're a loud panda.
Uh, bad news, guys. So we put the what's the sh called? Degreaser. We put we, we just cleaned the floor with degreaser because we returned the paint stripper because we're like, ah, the floor is fine. Just degreaser. This paint is such shit. But look at it. Look at that. We are not having to scrape barely at all, and it just comes up. So we were hoping to avoid this uh, because you guys know there's a lot of floor space. So we're going to go to the depot and get paint stripper. Time to buy some stripper. <laughs> so not going to do the walls today. Uh, it looks like we're just gonna strip the floor. Damn! Cut to when Chase is back. All right, compadres. Ugh, we're back. We bought the Rust-Oleum paint stripper stuff and a bristle thingy uh, roller to put it on. It says to let it sit between 30 minutes and five hours, depending on how thick the surface is. And with this stuff being coming off with just a degreaser. I'm hoping, hoping this paint stripper just rips it up. We'll see how it goes. This shop build is just getting ching, 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 ching. Hopefully it stops after this. guys so we let it sit for like 45 minutes and it's not really bubbling up yet as you guys can see can't really tell much so I don't think we put it on thick enough so what we're doing is another coat and hopefully that will get somehow the paint is now holding so we're gonna try to put more on and hopefully ooh. <laughs> okay, hold, on. <laughs> hold on hold on we're gonna make it okay. all right another coat and we'll, yeah, we'll catch back up. Just testing if it'll come up. It's clearly not ready yet. I tried, but when I did it, I pushed myself. It's not ready yet, boys. Good morning, everybody. It is uh, six o'clock the next day. As you guys probably saw, the Yesterday was not a very successful day. This is what the floor looks like today. I uh, left the shop last night at 6 to get home in time because I was going to go to Home Depot and get some stuff. So I'm going to show you guys what I got and I hope that it works better today. Uh, I think it will. The, the tools and stuff seem to be a little more higher duty. So let me show you what I got and we'll see how that works with the floor today. Okay, so as you guys probably saw yesterday, we tried scraping the floor and granted, we should have let the paint stripper stay on longer, but uh, the scrapers were a little low key, like not heavy duty. So I bought, this thing's only 30 bucks, and uh, this is premium paint and epoxy remover. So this shit, you paint on a three by three square and let it sit for 15 minutes and it'll bring epoxy up. Uh, let's see how it works y'all before I put the new stuff down I'm gonna try out the new like steppy big boy and see if one of this works and that paint stripper has been on there for uh, 12 hours now so I'm interested to see how the paint comes up so let's try that out before we we use our big boy chemicals catch up situation I've done this area and this kind of square after having done both of those I've let them wait 15 minutes 17 minutes and 20 minutes there's not really a big difference in the wait time and this product doesn't work that much better than the rust-oleum stuff so unfortunately today just looks like it's gonna be a really long arduous day and I'm not gonna film that this is this is uh, 
I try to film as much as I can here, and I want to bring you guys along with this journey, but this is that part of the journey where you just got to close your eyes and put your head down and do a lot of arduous, slow work. And hopefully, by the end of the day, I will be able to check in with you guys and show you guys what the floor looks like then. This is the not fun part. This is all the not fun that you have to do to get to the fun part of having a cool fun shop, so. What's going on everybody? I didn't expect to talk to you guys this early, but it's only 12 o'clock and we found out the secret to get sh off the ground. So, you gotta use paint stripper. The kind you use doesn't really matter. I would say that you could probably double the amount of square footage that the jug says that you could use it for. But it has to be thick. You gotta put it on so it's, you know. Right. You could stick your finger in it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do I mean, not, there's there's no you skimp. You but you wanna be able to. Right, don't do that. But there's no skimp, there's no money saving. Just make it thick, because yeah. you're gonna hate your life if you don't. And get brand new blades for this adjustable floor scraper. These things, a brand new blade on this is better than the heavy duty guy. As you guys can see, the guys just went to town on it and those new blades, I cannot express to you guys how important the new blades are. Okay, so now everything's still sticky. There's still little pieces. Uh, what's this, what are we doing now? What's this stuff called? Uh, degreaser. We the same stuff we degreaser. started with. Yes. Yeah, so now this is to kind of give us a clean coat here. Our goal today is to get done with the cleaning process so that tomorrow we can etch and paint the epoxy on. That would, today will be awesome if we can get all the cleaning stuff done. So we'll see what the uh, degreaser does. All right, ladies and gentlemen, two rinses, and at that point, we're going to let this thing dry, and at that point, we should be ready for concrete filler. So, we're looking good so far. You guys can see what the floor looks like now. Uh, in case you guys weren't familiar, uh, we're not gonna do epoxy on the other rest of the garage. Based on our experience on this side, we're just gonna use paint and potentially a clear coat. Haven't decided yet. We'll get this done. I'll show you guys the crack filler, or the concrete filler that we're gonna use. And at that point, that'll be the rest of today. Uh, and after that, we'll be done today because we need to let the uh, concrete filler dry. So, we'll see how that goes. All right guys, checking back in. Uh, we have been, Luke and I have been going over all the craters in here. Found out a cool strategy with this uh, concrete filler. I'll show you guys what it looks like. This stuff is made like filling cracks in concrete, but what we're gonna use it for, the person that was here before us obviously had some really uh, big equipment that they had like bolted to the ground. There ended up being all of these like craters. You guys can kind of see it. So what I've discovered is if you fill the hole all the way up, like overfilling, and then use a uh, taping knife, if you use one of these and just scrape it flat, you don't have to sand the floor. You're skipping a step because sanding obviously takes far longer than grabbing that little knife and just going. That is a quick tip, pro tip for you if you guys are gonna fill cracks. After this, we're done for today. This stuff's gonna take 24 hours to dry. So in the meantime, tomorrow we're gonna come in. We got a cool paint gun that we're gonna paint the walls with. We'll show you guys that on episode five. For the rest of this episode, we'll go to us painting the floor. Let's, uh, let's go. guys uh, we have let the etch set we've done all of the uh, rinsing had to do three of those 
And now it is time to do the painting. Now, if you guys have never seen an episode of me putting Rust-Oleum on, which I've done three videos on now, this will be the third one, uh, these things have a two-stage pouch, and you roll one pouch into the other one, shake it up, cut the tip off, and then you can pour it down. So that's what we're about to start doing. Whenever the guys get back in here, we are going to, somebody's going to cut, somebody's going to pour, somebody's going to roll. And the guys have some idea to use a heat gun to make it uh, smoother. Now, I've never done that, so I can't really comment on how good of a job it is, but these guys say that they've seen that done with epoxy before, so I'm interested to see how that goes. And uh, this should be a pretty quick process. In the past, I've done this by myself, I think every time. So having four guys doing it should be pretty interesting. So this is that two-stage burst pouch thing. It, this stuff actually comes with etch. I never use the etch. Foam roller, pouches, Decorative chips. I don't know if we're going to use the uh, decorative chips though. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the painting is done. Check it out. Oh, that looks so good on video. Okay, now all we have to do is wait. So uh, we'll be back tomorrow to finish this video and see what it looks like. So far, it's take looking a swim good. In it. Huh? I'll take a swim in it. Look at the floor. Floor. Bo, if you fall in it, you stay in it. Oh my god, don't even act like it, dude. Don't even. <laughs> What's up going on everybody uh, about to walk out the shop but wanted to uh, talk to the camera real quick to show you guys that uh, the garage floor is done we put the paint down on this half of the garage when I came back in after our Christmas break the paint looked fine and we went to like mop something up and the paint we put down started coming up now we just painted kind of on top of the old paint but the guys put a degreaser down and they mopped the ground it turns out that was an absolute cluster f uh, So what we ended up doing today, because we were going to like paint stripper and scrape all the floor in here today, but as you guys can see, there is a lot of flooring over here. So what we ended up doing was renting that like big floor buffer, and then you can also rent separate of the buffer, the little grinding pads. That shit took this stuff off quick. The good news is we were able to get the floor prepped in one day. If we wouldn't have rented that thing, there would have been no way Brian and I could have got the floor ready in one day, but it is what it is. It's one of the drawbacks. So tomorrow when we come in, we are going to etch the floor. We got more of that etching stuff that we used on our bay side area. Then after we uh, put the etch down, you got to wash it a couple times, like, you know, mop it. And then we should be able to paint. So that's where we are. I wanted to update you guys. Um, we're kind of at the point now where we have filmed so much, we just need to get done because we're running out of time. I'm about to go on my radio silence where I'm gone for two weeks, and when we get back, we got, you guys are sitting on a brand new motorcycle. So like, we got stuff to do. Okay, uh, I think we're good. Are we good to leave now? We're gonna be good to yeah, leave yeah, now. we're good. And we'll cut to whatever the next clip in this video is. Bo, let's find out. What's going on guys? Many weeks in the future on two wheels here. Uh, we just did a huge jump. As you guys probably noticed, with this flooring, not only on the bay side, but here on the other shop side, we have ran into so many problems. And uh, as you can see, the floor is painted and I'll show you guys uh, what we used and why we don't even know if we can recommend that. So we talked with one of the guys that has a shop space over here uh, just to talk to him about like we trying to meet our neighbors and everything but he told us that this shop before it was the sign company that was here before us 
there used to be a legal chop shop that would bring cars in and part them out. We think that that company just did whatever the hell they needed to do because the management here had problems with them and how they treated oil and other chemicals. Uh, we believe that the oil from that company and all the other chemicals that just dripped out of the cars they were chopping up has soaked in to this concrete so that nothing can stick to it. That's why that flooring, when we did the Bay Area, started coming up because that flooring could, like that paint couldn't stay on it. Long story short, the flooring has been an absolute nightmare. I can say that our epoxy flooring has held on pretty well. This paint, we got this uh, bare concrete and garage self-priming one part epoxy floor. We got it uh, colored to be this kind of gray, which the gray looks good. The problem is this floor in certain spots will not stay up. I'm trying not to show you guys too much of the shop because the shop is essentially done now. Uh, that's when we're filming this. Actually, we're filming this the day before it goes out live on Patreon. The floor literally chips up. Like I parked my MT-10 in here the other day and you can see where the wheels were. I'm gonna show you guys a close up. Look at how the floor is. That is only a wet motorcycle wheel. And when I moved it, the floor literally came up off the wheel. I don't know what else we could have done to make this floor stay better, but we literally, I'm gonna show you guys these chips, look at this. We cannot put motorcycles on this floor with the kickstand. I'll show you guys what we use. What is this? So we have to use MDF underneath the kickstands of even our little electric bicycle. Even the kickstand of that thing pulled this flooring up. We'll, we'll do a video in the future of what we do to solve for this floor, but right now, I mean, we're not, we, the color looks good. The color looks good in contrast with the, the bay side of the garage. I don't know, uh, we're not, we're not content with the floor. I'm gonna show you guys all the issues with this side of the floor, but check out these shots of the floor. I think the bay side looks great. Thank God that the Rust-Oleum stuff is thick enough to you know make a good layer. So I still recommend the Rust-Oleum stuff, regardless of how not far it goes. It's still a good product. And uh, you guys just keep tuned in for a future update with what we decide to finally do with this floor that actually works. But for now, that's it. I know that was a long video about flooring, but at the end of the day, flooring is super important and that's why we spend the amount of time we do on it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm Chase on Two Wheels. This is uh, episode four of our shop build. Stay tuned. We got more stuff coming and eventually we'll show you guys what the shop looks like right here and now. That won't be until the finalized video. That's episode six, right? Final video? Episode six, final video coming at you guys soon. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to uh, like the video and subscribe to see what the shop eventually looks like. As in right now, you guys just can't see the rest. You're not allowed. You're not allowed, not yet. Uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Later.